Hello there, I'm going to welcome back again. I hope everyone's having a nice time. So now we're back with another video from Adam, aka Level Earth Observer. And again, he's got it in his head that he's figured something out because he seems to love this SR-71 Blackbird. And his um, subscribers seem to also. And well, I'm going to have a quick shout out here to uh, Wolfie and um, Where's Wally for providing with a little bit of information here. That makes this video just a little bit smoother, a little bit quicker, and us have some meaningful information in it. Basically, like what what it is with this is that Adam and many of the flood earthers essentially find our applied science and applied physics too complicated. So they essentially replace it with their own that they find it easier to understand because they get bamboozled and confused, as we know they do. And so they replace it with their own. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. Science doesn't care whether you understand it or not, because it'll work anyway. Right? So, moving on to the plane aspect. Basically, what he thinks is that when you look at this as aspect of his video, is that he claims that point... Basically, he's got it in his head that point A and point B are at different elevations. As you can say, like curve drop. It's not drop especially not at that height right he seems to think and judging by his older videos when he used an elevation graph and he compared earth curve to elevation graph right he thinks that elevate uh, that change in elevation and earth curve are the same and obviously like i said he chooses to do things way out of context here and takes the scale remarkably out of you know proportions to basically make his point seem more relevant but that's obviously not how it works. Now, like I said, right, he's got it in his head that if a plane was at the red marker, it'll be at a lower elevation than it was at the yellow marker. But that's not how it works. Basically, how a graph would look, right, if a plane was at 50,000 feet at the red marker, 50,000 feet at the yellow marker, 50,000 feet at the green marker, that elevation graph would be a flat line. He seems to think that if that was the case, that the elevation graph should be some sort of arcing curve. Well, no. It's measuring the height from the ground level. That's all it's doing, Adam, right? You need to get that sort of thing out of your head. Then you've got to look at, like, you know, unbalanced forces. It's just not, it's not exactly on a, let's say, a track and it's dead center. There are forces that act upon the plane that make it lift, make it drop, slow it down. And then, you know, the engine speed it up. It's just how planes work. You know, artificial horizons. Most artificial horizons in planes will essentially correct themselves and adjust. And the problem is that they don't really take any of this into consideration at all. And the problem is as well, right? I was told this. It's what, what he does, and many of the flat earthers take, they, they measure it. From a stationary observer's viewpoint, basically the, basically obviously from his point of view, it looks like the plane is the increase in drop, but obviously the plane is still at fifty thousand feet, right? But from the plane's perspective, it's just maintaining an altitude the entire time. That's all it's doing. So basically, level Earth's observer's applications of maths, whether it's correct or not, is actually completely irrelevant. And I've, I have seen Wolfie and um, uh, Wally talk to him about this. And he, they do mention this to him many times. But it goes, it's like Concorde, an SR-71, essentially. It's like irony. And it goes straight over the top of his head. You know, it, he just completely ignores it. Basically, let's put it this way. For planes to maintain altitude, especially at most planes, right, they would require a one degree pitch every 111 kilometers. That's pretty much the rough, you know, rough point of it all. So at top speed, that's essentially only one degree in two minutes. So basically most cheap horizons essentially sort that out. You know? So this is the thing. His, his entire argument is completely irrelevant. And he's basically just choosing to ignore many aspects of physics here. Right? This is simple. This is just simple facts here. There is no elevation change, there is no drop. All the plane is doing is maintaining an elevation. 
right? So let's just put it this way. Let's just give you an example of, let's say, a hammer throw. You know, that ball on a chain. Now, if you swing it and you keep your stance, so, you know, you're swinging it and swinging it and swinging it. So you're turning your body, you're just your feet are moving and you're holding it out, right? That makes a circle, doesn't it? I know the chain and the chain represents the gravity here. But does that ball at the end need to actually pitch or do anything to actually go around? Well, no, it doesn't because it's been held in by the chain. Now, that's what gravity is doing. Gravity is essentially pulling that plane down or keeping it a certain height. For basically, the, for the plane to break orbit, to break Earth's gravity, it would need to just pitch up and off it goes. Obviously, it wouldn't work that way because it would run out of oxygen and the engines would fail. But you know what I mean. So, there we go. That's just, you know, a small little video today. Didn't really want to do anything too long. But essentially what this video is, is that all of Adam's arguments are completely irrelevant. Okay, so I'm going to go off and watch some Six Nations. <laughs> um, Wales aren't playing till tomorrow, but England are um, playing Scotland later. And that's going to be an interesting one to watch. So, hope everyone keeps safe. I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.